take the opportunity to give that respect to Chow because so many people <laughs> just want to throw Chow to the side. And I, and I still feel, and I believe you do as well, that he is still valuable um, in the PvP world today. You know, man, I am tired of talking Chow up. <laughs> I am tired. Like, Reddit, Reddit is on a mission. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Childish. We are back at it again with yet another episode of Educate and Dominate, the one-on-one -on -one interview space where we take some of the top names of the game and get their insights so we can bring your game to the next level. Uh, my next guest needs no introduction. We've had him uh, twice on board for Episode 6 and Episode 30 of Educate and Dominate, the Guardian 2 player from the Absolute Void, Caranther. How are we doing, sir? Uh, Guardian 3 this week. Oh, <laughs> fail! <laughs> fail! No, it's fine. It's my first time. I just wanted to brag a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all it. good. It's all my good. My efforts were finally rewarded. Hey, hey, congratulations, <laughs> sir. Congratulations. Thanks, man. It means a lot. <laughs> it's awesome. So welcome on back, my man. Uh, for those that are new uh, to the channel, uh, welcome to the channel. We do have the original uh, videos, episode 6. If you want to go ahead and kind of check on that to see some of the good content, um, as far as the introduction or whatnot, uh, learning how we came up or whatnot, we're going to kind of dive into a few different topics here. Uh, but between episode six and episode thirty, that'll give you a nice overhaul, like kind of view of, of what Caranther brings to the table. So, um, when I think about uh, him, uh, when it comes to this series, um, he's definitely one of the few uh, people out there that I brought on board that, when this series started to really blossom and, and started to create what is now known to have, you know, over. Um, I think I was with that 30, 30 some like thirty nine episodes or something like that. Um, he was one of the first that 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 when when this started getting out, it was like, oh my gosh, you better you better make sure you all get Caranther on this stuff, man. He knows he knows his stuff. So uh, we're always looking uh, to get people on board like that. And and, and uh, as always, I'm always forever grateful um, for him to take the opportunity not once, not twice, uh, but three times to come on board and get 2016 started off with a band. So thank you again, sir. You're welcome. You made me blush with all that. Yeah! <laughs> I like the blush. I like the blush. No, no, no. But for real, though, I mean, it's really appreciated, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm always excited to get these going here, because i got to learn something new. Um, but, you know, before we get into Summoner's War, I, I like to kind of go ahead and talk a little bit about, you know, what's been new, what's been kind of changing with you, my man. And one of the things that you do that other people don't um, is you're, you're branching off into a new way of doing uh, streaming. Uh, you know, generally people love to play around at the Twitch, which you have, but you've kind of moved on to uh, what is now, uh, you know, popularized as Camcord. So I was wondering if you could talk about that, your experiences on that, and, and how that's uh, kind of going out there for the people that are, you know, looking to stream and whatnot. Yeah, we could talk about it a bit. Um... For starters, I didn't. Uh, I, I was approached by Camcord after the one of their guys found me on Twitch and messaged me, and they offered me a contract. And that's the main difference between Twitch and Camcord. They they, they pay me. I'm a partner. You can become a partner from the get go, which is logical because they're a much smaller uh, 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 site than Twitch. So if Twitch handed out partners left and right, it would be <laughs> awkward. But, uh, yeah, my experience with it so far, uh, I have, uh, I obviously have way less viewers than I had on Twitch. But uh, it's still fun. I like the interface more. Uh, and the people who do come, we have some excellent conversations that we always used to have. Uh, the experience is, uh, they, they pay me on time, excellent support in general. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I just... Uh, being, I told you before, like being one of the people who established uh, Summer's War on Twitch, uh, I kind of kicked myself in the foot, uh, viewer, viewer, uh, side, uh, viewer wise. Sure, sure. Because, yeah, Twitch became uh, pretty big on Summer's War, and then I just left that community. Uh, I still go on Twitch for streams and stuff, but uh, I can't, I, contract wise, I can't stream on Twitch. So I wish people would come give me a chance a bit more. Okay, they better <laughs> do be it. Nice. Guys, it would be nice. As you guys see on the top right, we have his link for the camcorder. Make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Uh, definitely, definitely. So um, as far as uh, the, the camcorder, you said you kind of came on board and they kind of got you set up all the way. Um, 
if there's anything you would do differently uh, when you kind of got set up with that, as far as you know, moving from Twitch to Camcorder, because we got a lot of people. Oh uh, yeah, playing around. What what would you what would you tell your your fellow uh, guests or whatnot that, to make sure that they yeah do? that that was my that was my epic fail. If you want, we'll we'll do it at the start of the video <laughs> instead, of, uh, <laughs> instead of the end. If you want, uh, they ha they allowed me Camcorder allowed me for the first month to stream on Twitch as well. Uh, the contract allows you to stream on Twitch as well to you know gather your community, move them move them to Camcord, and I didn't do that enough. Like I did, I did one stream. I got it was funny because I did like one stream. I got like near two hundred viewers, and I tried I tried to you know get them to you know guys, I'm moving there, I'm moving there, I'm moving there, and then I only did that once. And it's the age of the internet. Once is not enough. Like right. you, you gotta you know bash it and. You know, tell people, really tell people uh, that you're moving so that if they really want to, they can follow you. Yeah. And it's not hard. I mean, it's just you can have Twitch and Camcord like in two different tabs if you're watching someone else. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah, that was my, that, that's what I would do differently. I would pretty much stream the whole month on Twitch uh, and then tell people, okay, last stream of the, last stream on Twitch today, let's go to Camcord. Cool. If you, whoever whoever uh, wants can follow. Good deal. All right, and then um, as I was gonna get ready to get into the summoning so stones, but I thought uh, as I go, uh, we'll we'll talk about some units as I see them fit. Um, we have ourselves uh, quite the handful of units in your selection. I'm working my way down on board. Um, but oh yeah, <laughs> we, we... it's the world boss, man. It's the world boss. They force you to have them all out. You know my, you know me. I like to have a storage. Like I, I like to have all my excess stuff in storage. Yeah. And now I have to ruin all that shit. And like you're you're pouring over Draco right now. He's. He has like triple energy sets just for the lows. Yeah, uh, hey, no, this is, this is standard. Works. We got to tell people this is standard. This is how you go: five yeah. energy with one blade. That is how you optimize. <laughs> no. your... That's it. No. That's it. No, it's all good. But hey, uh, you know the uh, one thing that uh, gets thrown around time and time and again is certain units out there. Um, they come on board, they come in strong, and then they kind of get pushed away on the sidelines because there's so many new units coming out there that are so, you know, awesome and excited and whatnot. But believe it or not, uh, if you develop, you know, and set up your units uh, the way it's intended or the way it should be intended, to, depending on his skill set or whatnot, you still can find a ton of value in this. And I want to take the opportunity to give that respect to Chow because so many people... <laughs> Just want to throw Chow to the side, and I, and I still feel, and I believe you do as well, that he is still valuable um, in the PvP world today. You know, Matt, I am tired of talking Chow up. <laughs> I am tired. Like Reddit, Reddit is on a mission to like smack the poor guy down. He's yeah. fine, guys. He is fine. <laughs> he is good. He does a lot of damage. He can survive a lot. Mine is barely grindstone, and he does like with attack buff and defense uh, and defense break. He does upwards of twenty five k, twenty nine k on his first attack. Imagine his second. Like I use him in comps where I f sort of force him to drop below uh, below thirty percent, and then I do sixty five to seventy k ignore defenses on people. Mm -hmm. it, he's good. He's good. He's not obviously he's not a Camila, but he's. Good. I don't get why people are so hell bent on trash talking Chow. And let me remind you of something. I was uh, the oldie, the oldies in the in the viewer base will remember it. I was always talking up Tesha, and Tesha was bashed for the longest time. Like I got Tesha level eleven August twenty fourteen. Right. I was talking him up, talking him up from the get go. And everybody was like, eh, Teshar sucks, Teshar sucks, Teshar sucks. He's useless, the most useless, one well, of the most useless not five. All he's good for is, uh, like, farming, etc., etc. And now everybody wants a Teshar. Like, mm -hmm. everywhere I go, all the, all the Twitch streams, like, everyone's like, oh, favorite Nat 5 Teshar. Oh, I wish I had a Teshar. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Chow will be the same. Just remember that. <laughs> Just gotta write it down. There you go. He'll get a buff. He'll get a buff and all of you will cry. 
Yeah, I'm waiting for it. Here we go. All right, so um, you know, as yeah, I move on through these rant units, over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hashtag rant over. Uh, as I'm moving through the, uh, the the summits and whatnot, I, I remember all of our conversations, in, you know, off camera and on camera with regards to um, the summoning zones, um, using it to your advantage. Um, you know, when you see fit. Um, you and I both have kind of a unique way, but obviously you kind of you know started that at least with from when I spoke with you, you, you kind of informed me about that as far as you know what to focus on and whatnot. So. Can you tell your viewers, you know, what what should be the kind of goal at the end of the day when it comes to so many stones taking advantage of this nice thing from come to us? Yeah, as you said, it is a very nice thing, and I think it gets lumped into the shithole that sorry for the language that is mystical scrolls. Uh, it's not like that. Like it's it's one of the better things that come to us have uh, given to the like I, I rank it almost right up there as fusion. That's how that's how good summoning stones are. Obviously, there's luck involved, whereas in fusion, for example, there isn't that much. But but if you take out the luck a bit, the <coughs> summoning stones are all that are so awesome because they just they, they give you that targetable. Uh, they give you those targeted pulls that you can uh, get. For example, right? Uh, I didn't have Hua for like almost ten months into me playing. I didn't have Hua, I didn't have Tyron, I didn't have Tassoon, I didn't have Orion, uh, and let's let's stick with those four. Those four are like pretty important monsters, especially Tassoon and Orion in the current meta, Tassoon even more before. Uh, Tassoon was notorious for never appearing on Summoning Stones, <laughs> right. and uh, she finally did, as most of you know. But all those, all those four monsters, Myself, I got them from summoning stones. I target, I kept them. I stockpiled them. I wasn't even looking at the nat fives. The nat fives are like no, you don't aim for nat fives on uh, summoning stones unless you have every single uh, good four star. Like even if you see very good nat fives go by, you don't summon. You wait until you get that Tyron and you complete your four star. Um, you complete your four star collection. Because they, they, they can be so important, especially to Soon and Orion and Hua. Like they're used in PV so much and uh, PvP as well. Tyron not Tyron has fallen off, but he's still good. Uh, I still so. use my Tyron. My Tyron exactly. I, I, <laughs> I only use him. You can go check him. He has like runes that I use him from TOA ninety three hard until like TOA ninety seven hard. Like that's all he exists for. Mm -hmm. There it is. <laughs> But yeah, he has copy runes on him, but he does the job, and that's all I need from him. Right. And he's still max skilled. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and yeah, mine's max skilled too. It's just definitely yeah. take advantage of it while you can. So, but yeah, he's 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 really good. But yeah, summoning stones aim for four stars all the way. I know it seems kind of uh, people are like, saying, yeah, obviously, but it's not that obvious when you see that juicy nat five that you might want. Mm -hmm. Juicy and, Lucy. Yeah, always aim for the four stars. After you come, like now, I have every four star I might need. I'll, I'll aim for five stars. Fine. Like also the Vanessa rotation that we're getting next week, mm -hmm. uh, guys. The the Vanessa Anvil Triton rotation is probably the best rotation I've seen ever since Summoning Stones were introduced. It go. has three amazing nat fives. Uh, all of them are kind of relevant throughout metas. Buff removal from Triton. And uh, Anavil has always been sort of relevant to PvE, at least now with raiding even more. And, uh, well, Vanessa's Vanessa. And then the amazing part of, about this, it has three amazing Nat 5s, and it has all the four stars are uh, good towards awesome. It has Beretta, it has Freya, who are TOA monsters. It has uh, Water Lich, Raid, and uh, Necropolis DPSer. It has... Uh, uh, what is Galleon? Who is Galleon? Obviously, it has Briand. It's like that rotation. I urge every single person ever to summon in this rotation, unless you have all of those monsters or something. Yeah, it's fu it's funny. I'm glad you incorporated that that, that Nat Four talk because when you when you just got done talking about stay away from the Nat Fives, you started out the conversation with, "Oh yeah, you got the three best Nat Fives in here." I was like, "Uh." <laughs> No, no, no. It's more, the amazing yeah. part is the nat fours. Like we've we've gotten three good nat fives before. We haven't gotten a, a full roaster of good nat fours before. Never. It's never happened. Yeah, I agree. 
I agree. Good. And looking at these, um, uh, looking at the rest of the units, I was trying to see um, if there was anything that we uh, might have uh, missed in the last episodes or whatnot. I know I wanted to do just a quick tidbit on uh, Molly. For those that have watched the original uh, videos, Molly was one of the... Um, uh, uh, I have a How to Molly as well. I have a video. Oh, okay. Uh, it's called How to Molly on my YouTube channel. How to Molly. Uh, and How to Molly. <laughs> we'll have to, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a link down below, but uh, definitely make sure you guys check into that. Um, he was one of the guys that, you know, kind of brought it up in the uh, in the videos, in the Educate and Dominate videos, and then the, the following week, two, three weeks, you see everybody, <laughs> you saw everybody <laughs> randomly bust out their mollies, and, and, and it's, it's funny because I, I was like, everyone like, uh, you know, underrates it, you know, they, they, they go in there, it's like, oh, it's no big deal, and then they glance on their, one of their biggest, like, yeah. crowd controlling skills, or, or, Man, or de defense. I, 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 I'm, so, I'm sorry about the language, but I have never, uh, like people have never said fuck fuck you to me more than <laughs> when they see me after I pu I put Molly in my defense like forever like stabilized her. Yep. People just see me and instead of hi they first lay, they first say like fuck your Molly and then they and then they talk <laughs> to me. <laughs> nice. Actually, what I what I might do is I might take that clip of the the arena recording uh, and then I'll put I'll put it at the end of the video. So they can get us. Again. Oh, so you, you, oh yeah, you, yeah, but yeah. you didn't attack my real defense. But still, uh, that defense is pretty annoying itself. Yeah, I think it is annoying. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me see here. So, and then, and then, moving on with what uh, we were going to talk about in regards to the grindstones. A lot of the units that you have, you know, uh, your your top top units, you're starting to incorporate the grindstones. But for the longest time, you actually held back on using some of the grindstones for these main units. So, can you talk a, a little bit about your strategy and why is that the case? Oh yeah. Uh, as you can see, uh, if you look at most of my units, uh, my, AD, my AD relevant units especially, I don't use grindstones on them, especially the violent ones. Like there's ba there, there barely should be any upgrades. Only just a couple on Chow, I think, nothing else. Because yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think he has like one gem or something like that. Like on his, yeah, on his crit damage rune, just that, just that. The Nemesis ones I've used and Revenge ones I've used a bit more because they're a bit rarer. They're not that much of like I I've kept most of the violent ones. I have kept the Nemesis ones lately as well. Uh, mainly because I am trying to incorporate grindstones to rune removal, and I think everyone should do that because they make especially gems, but the grindstones as well can completely change runes like a rune that is i uh, let's take an example of a rune i have for, uh could you go to trevor and check his uh, third slot there you are okay perfect so you see this rune right it has very good crit rate it has crit damage it has hp but then it has resistance and on a it cannot get attacked right it's a third it's a three slot so dps wise it has one kind of useless stat but if that if that rune gets speed, then it's then it's a top 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 tier rune, right? And yeah, then you upgrade the speed and the HP a bit, and boom, you have a crazy good DPS rune, like even a Camilla rune maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so grindstones and gems can completely change your rune removal. You shouldn't you shouldn't lightly just throw grindstones on your monsters. Yep. Uh, you should wait and uh, you know not rush. The, like the the eternal advice from uh, from me, whether it's should I go to dragon, should I go to giant, should I do what? Don't rush. Like this game is not about and to help with not uh, rushing. Don't look at other people that much because you'll get jealous and you get depressed. It's like oh he's so far ahead of me. I gotta rush. Don't. Yeah. You don't have to. You should enjoy the game however you want. Right, and, and and even you know when you're talking about speed and being able to upgrade and whatnot, that's the one thing that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, you know, as far as the difference on the grindstones and the enchantment gems, um, I know that a lot of people in my guild, you know, early on, we didn't realize that after you enchant um, a gem, you know, changing the substat or whatever like that, you can actually improve it with a grindstone. You know, a lot of people just thought yep. initially all you could do is change it, and that was it. But you can change it and improve it. So definitely make sure you hold on to those good uh, enchantment gems. Oh. On to that. On to that. Um, I got um, I got a couple of good enchantment gems, but let's start with like yeah, I got uh, I got two epic ones. The the, the epic ones are seven to eleven percent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I put one of those on a monster. Mm, and it got 7%. So, what I'm thinking is, okay, I'm going to risk this. Because I want that extra 4% because this is a monster that I really I, I use a lot. And I'm going to upgrade the stat again with the gem. I'm not going to grindstone it yet. And hope to get like anything but the minimum percentage. Right? So I did it again. I got a 10%. Not 11 but you can't have everything. And I'm like, okay, 10% I can get behind. And then I upgraded it with a grindstone. So remember that you can re-upgrade uh, your gem enchants. You can only change one stat in each rune so you should be careful about that but um but you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, like have to live with the um you shouldn't have to live with the lowest with the lowest roll if you don't want to because you can even like change the stat and just not grandstone it until you get a better gem yeah. that's also fine Oh, 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 oh. And one more thing. Oh, one more thing about grindstones. Uh, don't sell the epic. Even the blue ones. I sell the blue ones preferably because they're not that much big of a difference. But don't sell the epic flat HP upgrades. The grindstones. Don't sell them. Don't sell them. I don't even sell the, I don't even sell the epic uh, flat HP uh, gem enchants. <laughs> Uh, for like a couple of specific runes, like energy runes, I don't sell them. Uh, I keep the flat HP because you never know. Like, uh, especially there are a few. All of us have a few runes that we we have two stats we want to change, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them is flat HP. But flat HP can get to ridiculous levels. I have a couple of runes that have one K flat HP plus because I upgraded them with a grindstone. One thousand HP is nothing to scoff at, guys. Right. right. It's a lot of HP. It's like it's like a ten percent H for a for a monster that with uh, ten thousand base health. That's a ten percent HP uh, substat. So don't uh, don't uh, sell the especially the epic ones because they can get get you up to four hundred and fifty extra base HP uh, flat HP. Yeah, don't don't sell them. They can get to ridiculous numbers, and it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, you should keep uh, those grindstones. Mm-hmm. And let me see here. Uh, before we move on to the rifting, uh, is there anything else you could think of with regards to the summoning stones or grindstones that you wanted to add on there? Uh, I don't think so. I think I, I, I think we finished with the stones. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. <laughs> All right. So moving on to that hot topic, still a hot topic uh, to this day, the rifting and whatnot. Um, I'm going to do a quick shout out here uh, for the Yuma Denema who came on board uh, at the end of the uh, year last year to go ahead and kind of give us that introduction on the field for it. Um, the great thing about uh, this particular um, part of the game when we get a new concept is uh, the farther we get into the, you know, the, the more days we progress into the game and play around with it, we learn more new and exciting things. So um, as stated, you know, earlier in the video, I wanted to bring Granther on board to kind of give us the updated, you know, knowledge uh, as far as what he has learned um, when it comes to um, rifting from his perspective as well as his guildies and whatnot and his theory crafters. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I guess what we're going to be focusing on is, is more than likely um, the level four uh, rifting level, if I'm if I'm standing correct. Is that correct? Yeah, four and five. Four and five. Specifically okay. four, yeah. Okay. I um, I guess my first question to ask you, because um, we got a lot of people playing around with this, is the not no so much the composition of the um, team with respect to your players, but your own personal composition. Um, you know, when when you're looking at your team and whatnot, um, what do you feel as far as the number of healers, the number of cleansers? Uh, so on and so forth. What do you feel is that "quote unquote" optimal composition before you, for you before even getting into your opponents? I know that doesn't make too much sense because you have to consider the <laughs> players that you play with, you know, uh, before making that on board. But let's talk about standard, just just standard, just kind of blanket stuff. To, that regardless of what composition you come into at a level four, level five, there's just certain things that you have to have. Um, whether it's stat wise on defense or, or, or you know hit points or whatever like that that you have to have when coming on board. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, so, for example, myself, I have a stable. Uh, I have a stable uh, four and five mo for the most part. Comp. I don't ever change it. Uh, I, there is only one flex. There is one flex spot in it, so that can help with uh, people who uh, like for, with uh, if. 
we don't have enough debuffs or something like that. Uh, what I do is I put Diaz and Vela, Veladio, in the front line as tanks. And then I put Colleen, Tessarian for resistance lead because I don't have any good flat uh, leads. I just use Tessarian with a hybrid DPS spec that I'm going to change on removal and make him a bit, you know, a bit tankier and a bit uh, much faster. Uh, and Hua and Sassoon, so th that, that's my back line. So, as you can see, that comp has one cleanser, that also is an ADB booster, and immunity buffer, and a tank, and a decent DPSer. So, that's Vela. So, I don't, for fours, I don't use another cleanser. I don't think it's, it's uh, needed that much. Um, for fives, I replace Hua with Konamiya, usually. And I have done it in fours as well. If we, if we're like if uh, the other people are a bit selfish and stuff and don't have a lot of debuffs, I put in Konamiya instead of Hua to keep my monsters uh, always unstunned and un uh, unencumbered in general, so that they can keep putting on the debuffs and try to help my team. But yeah, Konamiya is like completely ruined for raiding. Like I've done nothing. Like, he has fifty nine percent resistance to get the resistance lead. He has. A lot of speed, as much as I can put on him without giving him his my best runes. And he has some defense, he has some HP, he's he's awesome for backline. So uh as to go like a bit more uh general to your question, to attack to attack it from a more general perspective, I'd say you should have two cleansers, unless you have Vela. You should have three healers, unless you have Tassoon. And <laughs> you should uh, run at least one, you should run a good universal lead. Like, if you don't have universal leaders, suck it up and use the Sarian, guys. Like, really, <laughs> just suck it up and use the Sarian. You can be the Tassarian bitch. It's not, it's not wow, you're not going to be judged on your DPS. If you're doing your job, it's fine. Right. Uh, like, suck it up and use the Sarian is probably my... <laughs> And if you don't have DS, Darian is a more than good, uh, 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 what should we call it, replacement for him. I know Scat uses Darian instead of DS, and he, do, he does fine, but Scat is Scat, yeah, I understand that. Gotcha. But yeah, you can use Darian instead of DS just fine, because yes, we had a HOH from DS, but not that many players uh, still have him or played back then. So Darian is a much easier to... Uh, uh, get monster that you can you can even put him in the front line if you since Darren will probably be a raid monster for you if you're not using him you can ruin him like speed speed HP defense or HP defense HP or something like that to make him uh, because you won't care about his damage that much which is why you usually ruin him HP you care about his survivability uh, you can put a defense rune in there to help him survive the front line my DS has two defense runes on him. He used to be HP, HP, defense, but he's HP, defense. He's defense, defense, HP now, I think. Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah, because he just... He was dying. He, he was dying. I was still clearing it, even with him dying. But it's just so much better now. Yeah. Like, well, I figured out why you were dying, dude. You didn't upgrade this to plus 15, dude. What's, what's going on? Ah, fuck. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> there it is, right there. I found, I figured it out. Obviously, I know what I'm talking about here. You don't get yeah, plus fifteen your runes, bro. Also, also DS. I'm going to max skill him if if I don't get anything from my mass summons, uh, like next in two weeks. Uh, I'm gonna max skill DS with Devil Mons. Uh, I'm waiting for the Brienne rotation on stones because I'm gonna summon then and get like he's so good skilled up, so good. Mm -hmm. So you should also consider this if you're not if you don't have anything to skill up. DS is a pretty good target because he's amazing for raids, and for fives, like, for fives, that team that I am using has worked. I've I've cleared five a couple of times. It's just that it's uh, the runes are not perfect yet. I haven't moved around the correct runes without rune removal. I can't do it, so that's why I don't. I, I usually run fours. Uh, so to re to recap, for a, a decent force team, you want uh, you don't need a DPSer. Like you don't have to be the DPSer in your group, and uh, you you should go either three to three or two to four, 
front, front line back line usually we can talk about that a bit more later yeah, that was actually the next year coming back. yeah yeah uh but you should definitely put and don't use talc please don't use talc he's so bad he just sits there and does nothing um but yeah uh use one or two cleansers two or three healers the siren if you have him other leaders of course if you can't if you don't um you could, Hua is a pretty decent monster for it as well uh, if you have a Hua you can find a way to like maybe make her the flex pick like she's in mine if if the team is holding its own you can use Hua if it's not you can swap in another cleanser or something or another healer uh I I I usually replace my Hua with either Bella or Kona uh but yeah uh, recently, I didn't have up up until recently. I didn't have to soon either, so I was I was running a completely like full support debuff team, and it worked wonders. Like it was, I think it was Vela, Vela, Bella, uh, Vela, Bella, Diaz, uh, Colleen, Tessarian. I think this or and one more. I don't remember, but like it was full healers. You can do that. Yeah. Yep, and actually that's that was what I did on my first uh, level five clear. I had two of my guildies um, that were definitely you know stronger than me um, when it comes to the providing the units that have a, a nice hybrid of damage and support. But I had the units that just incorporated all around support with the debuffs and whatnot. So you have Jamir though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, and that's that's the crazy thing. That was Jamir was one of the uh, the things that I needed. Um, we didn't have a speed lead at the time. We had plenty of defense and resistance leads, but we didn't have speed leads at the time. So it, it allowed me to to definitely uh, you know use him you know, more more so now than I ever have before because of, uh, of the fact that I can incorporate that. So um, what was I going to say here? So you know, just kind of like, like you were getting ready to branch off into you know um, not just talking about the front line, but the composition of the front line versus the back line. You got a lot of people that when they came on board, we all did the same thing everybody else did. You know, three in the front, three in the back. But, you know, when it comes to level four rifting um, and, and you consider the composition that you bring, you know, depending if you're support or support with a little bit of DPS, it seems to be that the more popular setup that people are using now to have those consistent kind of cleary runs with a little bit of speed and in, in such is going with that two fork um, composition. So why don't you tell me. Um, a little bit about maybe the pros and cons of going, uh, you know, like four, four, two, four front, two in the back versus two in the four, and and how you feel that people coming into the level four rifting, you know, now, um, what what should they what should they try to focus on before even considering, you know, how many they go back and forth with? Let me derail you just a little bit, guys. Nope, also, allowed, don't allowed. Don't, ru don't rush <laughs> fours. Like they nerfed one to three for a reason. Right. You can do. You can do. Sp very speedy threes runs and still get pretty decent grindstone to help you if you're more of a mid mid late game uh, person not a late late game person. Uh, don't rush fours again as well. Like, and if you if you're having trouble in rifts and that's your main focus, grindstone your your rift monsters. Like, upgrade and fully deck out your rift team. If that's what you want your focus to be, you shouldn't have your best runes and grindstones and your PvP monsters and then say, oh crap, I can't do fours. No, you focus on fours and then next rune removal, after you've gone a full month of, uh, uh, of level four farming, you can then you know, go back to your PvP monsters and deck them out right. in turn. And you and you might even find yeah. that you might even find that when you're upgrading them, you got you know you got a couple of options once you upgrade, and, and so take a look at the units that you have available to upgrade, and see which one is going to help you out in all aspects of the game. If you find that you're yes. using it for rifting and, and PvP, then maybe you know prioritize that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I have Vela, for example. Uh, yeah. Vela and Sasuna eh, in my guild. But yeah, anyway, uh, your question was about frontline backline. So let's. I don't know how the, the, if there are many uh, uh, disadvantages to uh, to the two four. Like, well, I think the two four is just way too good. Right, and and, and my my uh, I guess my question to go and elaborate on that is yeah. is when we're talking about the two four lineup and talking about um, the the raid bosses AOE. Uh, you know, he does a certain amount of damage, and obviously the the defense is going to help mitigate it. But the defense or the damage is spread out evenly between the u the the the, the units. It's not out spread there. out. They all take the same damage, though. That's the thing. That's why it's uh, it's not really uh, worth it to go four units because then four units take damage instead of two. 
Right. That, and, and I might have read that wrong or whatever, because I initially when I read it, I thought the even though they all take damage, um, the damage that was done or whatever was going to be like there's a certain amount of damage done and then it's going to be spread evenly throughout the units. I mean, with respect to, their, to, to the defense that they have or whatnot. So am I, did I stand incorrect on that one? Then? Yeah, I think it's it's not like that. I, I'm not exactly sure. Like, uh, it doesn't really matter that much for me to be that sure. But yeah. uh, the 2-4 two, two, uh, lineup is good for specific reasons. For starters, if you have Chasun, it's very, very good because you put Chasun in the down back line. <laughs> You put her in the back line, and then she can fall and blossoms the shit out of your front line. That's why you, you don't put her in the back. Because if you put her in the front line, she takes damage, and then she's selfish. She heals herself. Right. You don't want that too much. Because uh, if uh, because she won't heal the other person, for example. Like, my Sassoon saves my DS all the time. That's why she's in the back line, and she just keeps healing him up. And uh, because she's a bit faster than him, she also gets full attack bars all the time. Which is like this is th th that's why you should put really just put Sassoon in the uh, in the back line. It's really good. Put Delphoi and I don't know Darian in the front, and then put Sassoon in the back line if you have her, and you'll have a much greater time. You might even be dying because of this. Like it's it's really good to put. Uh, healer with a balance such as the soon in the back it helps a lot uh frontline backline in other terms like just don't put colleen and uh don't put colleen and uh kona in the front line unless you have crazy defense uh put bella in the front line if you have if you have him speed hp defense or de uh, speed defense defense if you use him only for raiding he has pretty good base def so he can he can survive the front uh like a, a Bella rune like my uh, like my DS can survive frontline. Mine has done it with speed HP defense. He he used to be in the, in my frontline. He was doing fine in force. Uh, I, think they, I think they both actually have the same base defense. Yeah, so yeah, they have one. they have they have the same. Yeah. Yep. Bella has really high base defense. I think they have the same HP base HP as well. Uh, but yeah. Um, I think that's it with the front line back. And obviously, put DPS in the back line. That those are kind of self. Like gotcha. the, put put your cleanser. Put one cleanser in the back line. If you're using two cleansers, don't put both of them in the front line. Gotcha. As well. Cool. cool. Maybe if you're using Delphoi Vela, but yeah, I like having one cleanser up, uh, like undamaged in the back. Yeah. yeah, understandable. Good deal. All right, and then um, with regards to the next topic, the uh, topic of, of violent versus you know not using violent. We've had a lot of people over the course of the last month talk about the pros and cons of uh, of you know bringing in a lineup of violent or whatnot. What's your take on um, when you're choosing a particular setup? You know, if violent or, or, or not violent is strong. What do you think? Uh, to be honest, it all depends on your runes. Like uh, this raid is uh, the 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 monsters in this uh, that you use to kill this raid. Scale ridiculously well with speed. Like mm -hmm. the, the, the the speed is so important in this. So if you can make monsters uh, fast-ish with violent, go violent. It's it's gonna be better. Like uh, especially because they can violent out. Of, violenting out of stun is so 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 good. And the cooldowns and because of the stuns as well. Even if they get stunned, if they violent in the next turn. They still because we forget that stuns uh, uh, freeze cooldowns. Right. The cooldowns don't turn if if you're stunned. <laughs> uh, so you still get violence get you this uh, chance to even out uh, the cooldowns as well and keep your run smooth. If you if you can make if you can't make a monster like if if you, if by putting violent on a monster you have a one twenty speed Bella. Then don't. But uh, it's it's pretty like you'll see. Burke is a kind of extreme example, but Tisqua is like one uh, two hundred and forty speed on uh, on violent. No. Well, da like I'd prefer that to Swift with the same speed, obviously. Yeah. Two thirty six. Not that I've been stocking them or anything, but just saying, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> 
But it's, it's funny that you mentioned uh, Burke. I definitely wanted to get into um, some of the more unique units out there that, uh, you know, kind of the, the dark horses, for uh, for example, that people have been uh, testing out and talking about. Um, before I get into the one that he uses, I wanted to talk about one that I've seen uh, my guildies use quite a bit, and I know you've had a couple of people use it as well. Um, one of the units that everyone you know, got, you know, a while ago and maybe they didn't play around with it too much. And then now they're starting to play around with it because of the, you know, the changing of the, um, the skill set and whatnot. We got ourselves Bethany, the dark archer, if I can find her. There she's she a nat four. So she's in the five stars. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Bethany is like, she has perfect DPS, uh, raid skill set because she has, uh, attack debuff on first skill. Then, uh, and it also does more damage the more debuffs there are on the target. So, you know, the target usually has a lot of debuffs in raiding. So she does that extra damage. She has ignore defense, which is really good in raid. And uh, she has attack speed debuff, so, which is also... It's not one of the, like, super-duper important ones, but it's, it's still a very good debuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't ruin her... Please, if you're going to run her in raids, don't, don't ruin her attack for damage attack. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> she's on, gonna man. die. She's gonna like die a hor Yeah, yeah. She's gonna die a horrible death, either yeah. at the fifty percent or the twenty five percent. So uh, in, in four and five. Just don't run her attack like run her HP crit damage attack and you're gonna be rewarded. Yeah. All the people all the serious people that I've seen use Bethany have run that and she does she just doesn't die. She's fine. Right. Uh, I've had I've seen uh, that's the one thing that I've get I got so much in the last two weeks when I was uh, during the time that we were having our baby. Whatnot, as people were like, dude, the archers are are great, man. I know you still got that six star Adela sitting back there, child. As you got to bust them out, and I'm like, I threw some runes on them so I can do the world boss or whatnot. Make sure I use my uh, swords, whatever for that. Um, but obviously, I wasn't looking to put on my best <laughs> runes on Azita. So while I had the stats that looked like superb, her hit points were like nine thousand. One, I'm like, guys, there's no way that this is gonna last in level four. Okay, one. Yeah, the win one is especially. Squishy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 boss can blink at me and I'll die. Like it's this this can't can't do it right now. But yeah, hybrids. It's it's really cool to see. Um, you know, people you know talking about again. You know, uh, you know, playing around with hybrid formats because again, it's it's definitely been out there. Haven't been you know haven't a lot of people haven't found a, a reason to use it for. And now it seems like some of these unique units you can definitely get away with the whatnot. I know that Hoa um, for a lot of people have they've been definitely using kind of a hybrid format as well. So. Um, let me see. Actually, this is one that we didn't talk about, but I wanted to know if if, if somebody has tested this or whatnot. Maybe you've heard about this, so we can put it out there. Um, one of my favorite units that I never got the opportunity to play around with, Pang. Do you know if her, if her? No, uh, it doesn't. It, she doesn't the, work. No. Uh, she damn. only works for she only works for the person uh, using her. It doesn't work for the others. Gosh. That's um, that's so brutal because I I was thinking to myself like if it was if it was something it's that like could be bombs. Used... Do you know what Sarah does? Where like the the you can't see the bombs that she puts up. Yeah, or any bomber for that matter. But you have to go to the platform of the person doing it. It's the same for Pang. It's it sort of bags it bugs it out. I don't know how exactly it works, but yeah, it's she doesn't work. No. Another a, a light unit that is pretty good in fours and I don't know if about fives, but definitely good in fours is. Right under Pang, the Light Barbaric King. Uh, Noxior uses it from my guild. Uh, he has him attack or damage attack. He's, he has a self heal. He has an attack bar nullifier. And he has a branding effect. And he does a lot of damage. And he's very tanky. Like his stats are really tanky. So he has him attack or damage attack. And he still, he almost never dies. Uh, like runs with him. We found a comp with him, uh, another person, and myself, and we do fours in like one minute, 30 seconds, to two minutes, 30 seconds, depending on RNG. Gotcha. And then... So yeah, Mimir, really good. Let's see. And then the last one that we got to give a little shout out to Berg420 again. Playing <laughs> around with this and whatnot. Uh, I see I see the non-awakened one. I'm trying to find the awakened one here. Yeah, you got to go the awakened four stars. There you go. Yeah, Ignicus. Yeah, buddy. So tell me a little bit about, you know, how you, you know, recently, you know, we recently found him through the website or whatnot, and then, and then you know, kind of tell oh. us more about that or whatnot, how to, how to get, get going. Uh, yeah, no, obviously, uh, to prevent any trolls in the comments, I'm not taking credit for the Fire Shark. Let's start with this. Like, yeah. obviously, Burke, 
find a, found it, like first used it. Burke already had one level forty for TOA, but he wasn't really using him because it just he had better stuff. But uh, if the way I uh, thought he'd be decent, I didn't think he would be that gr as great as he turned out to be. But I, th I thought he'd be decent. Was I just w uh, when raids came out, like a couple of days in? Uh, what I did is I just went to uh, uh, Tool Shack, the Summoner's War Tool Shack, and I just filtered monsters that have attack attack debuff and unrecoverable and attack speed debuffs and stuff like that. And Ignicus was one of the monsters that came up. Uh, I hadn't considered his leader skill, which is what makes him actually even better because of all the Hwas and the Velas used in uh, and the Colleen's used in the in raiding. But his debuffs on his second and third skill are damn amazing, and uh, that's that's how I came up with, uh, came about to, uh, to like thinking, oh, he's decent. And then Burks Burks found him out and like started using him and using him to amazing uh, effect. So yeah, he's he's a rift only monster. No, uh, he's sorry. What I what I meant to say was he's not a rift only monster. So if you're having trouble with TOA and want to uh, branch out to Rift as well at, at some point. He's actually a very, very good monster to make because he he will help you with TOA and maybe TOA hard with pretty much the same runes as uh, you will use in uh, Rifting. Which, granted, you can go Despair for TOA and then Violent or something, or like triple triple sets, triple two sets for Rifting. But still, he, he's he's not just the Rifting monster, so you can uh, you can it's not a bad monster to build if you're at that stage of the game. Gotcha. And was there any other units that you could think of off the top of your head that uh, people definitely have underrated that are still pretty viable? Well, obviously Colleen. Colleen. Uh, they haven't underrated her. That's, well, that's not. What I'm saying is, yeah. like, for the for the unique units, you know, what I'm thinking about, like the Bethany's and the and the fire sharks, oh, any uh, of those unique, like, rare units that you've seen, like Water Lich. Water Lich. Ooh, <laughs> dusting them off. He's dusting them off. Oh, uh, I think Cold Steel. Uh, like, showcase them. Showcase them in. Um, in Necro, and he's amazing in Necro because he, he makes your runs faster because he can't get stunned and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also really good because he, he has a reduction, a crit reduction passive as well as an immunity to stuns. So that on its own makes it pretty good for, for raiding because he can't get stunned and he has his own mini uh, damage reduction sk uh, build. He does decent damage, he has attack speed and defense break. Uh, uh, debuff, so he d he does contribute in that. All in all, he's a very very good DPS for uh, for raid. You can even you can ruin him attack or damage attack or even uh, HP or damage attack if you want to make sure he doesn't die, and then put him in the back line. He won't get stunned. He'll put attack speed on the debuff on the boss. He'll do a lot of damage because all of the hits from his second will hit the boss, so he can do ridiculous amounts. So yeah, what a lich. I haven't seen any any in raid yet. I want to see one. Like that's partly the reason of why I'm summoning in the next uh, summoning stones rotation because I want a water lich. Yeah, uh, both for necro and for. Uh... I never thought in a million years I'd ever heard anybody say I want a water lich. <laughs> but it's crazy, right? That's the all the liches are good for necro. Even the even the non uh, the sinkhole ones, uh, the fire one and the yeah the light one. The light one isn't that great, but the the fire one actually is still. Good for Necker as well. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of people use the wind and the dark one lately, but I haven't. That, yeah. This is the first time I, I heard about. I think the other. water is the is better. It was way better than the wind. Yeah. Way better. Yeah, for this instance, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Both for Necro and for raids. For Necro, he's amazing because he doesn't get stunned. You have a you have a DPSer that doesn't get stunned from the stupid towers or the golems during the waves. You realize how much faster the waves can go with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to. You got to have it in there. Yeah, buddy. Okay, yeah, so if there, I'm trying to think if there was any. I, I know that I keep on. We're going to think about it right after we get off of the, uh, the camera. But is there any other units that you could think of um, that I that we might have missed or whatever? Because I'm sh sure people put it down in the comment section or whatever. But some of those unique <laughs> rare units. I can't think of anything uh, else. Well, Molly. <laughs> well, yes, Molly. But with, with respect I to the I used, rifting. I, yeah, I used Molly in 5 and for to great effect. Ooh. She's really good specifically for... Uh, uh, 
uh, for, for a protected DPS comp. So I was running a Theomars DPS, and then I was running Molly, and whenever he got low, she would shield him, clear his debuffs, let him do all the damage he could do. You know, and she has really high base defense as well. Uh, she also usually... She doesn't bring much to the... She She's a kind of selfish monster mm -hmm. because she doesn't bring any debuffs. But she does decent damage because of max HP damage and she has a cleanse and uh, on a low cooldown she heals. So she, she keeps she keeps your stuff a bit uh, balanced HP wise and she has the passive which is pretty great. Yep. If you have sub... Like she gets fifteen percent, twenty five percent resistance from awakening. So with the with the leader skill, she usually has eighty one percent resistance. So all you need to do is have nineteen percent resistance from subs, and you have a hundred percent resistance. So oblivion doesn't even bother you that much. Yeah, that's crazy. Because uh, like I said initially, when I thought about the unit, um, you know, as far as what it brings to the table, um, I, I didn't think it was enough for, to be considered, you know, in the top end in the rift and whatnot. But that's it's good. I don't think it's top end, but it yeah. might help a lot of people, you know. Uh, get that extra step because it, it's a selfish monster. Monster, granted, but it's it's a very good selfish monster. That right, right. Will help you out. Like you can bring five uh, team monsters and Molly, and that can help you. You know, you survive so that you can, you know, help the raid with the rest of your monsters. Good uh, deal. And so, uh, breaking into that level five topic, I was wanting to go ahead and finish off the. The rifting conversation, unless you can think of anything else, with regards to um, us moving from level four to level five. You know, we we talked about prior to that. Um, even though we can clear level five, there's a lot of um, things that we might have done differently, or a lot of things that we've learned from as, as far as some of our own personal mistakes that we kind of wanted to bring on board when it comes to level five. Is there anything that you can think up off the top of your head that um, you've learned along the way the, for people to consider um, when playing around from level four to level five? The big difference. Uh, one of the best things you can do and might be the the only single thing you'll need to go from level 4 to level 5 is make a damn 200 speed colleen seriously mm. just do that that's what i that that's the main thing that i'm doing to move from 4 to 5 for uh level 5 colleen is just so good her her debuffs are amazing she has a good heal with an attack buff that helps you dps mine was rune for necro and i haven't changed her uh, since raid came out, but I'm going to change. I'm gonna make her like 200 speed. That's one thing that will help you out. Uh, another thing that will help you a lot with like because you can do fours with uh, with decent monsters, decent runes, and like other other uh, runes that are used for PvP or for TOA or for dragons and necro. You can do for reliably with those runes but five is another animal like you have to have a bit more personalized to five to raid five runes for it and what you can do is just get everything to 59 percent resistance if you can for example yeah. Yeah, that's if you're great. not using yeah if you're not using your monsters for uh, uh, for other things as well if you're not using your raid five team monsters for matzos you can throw an endure set on each and every one of them as yeah. well Key and keep those enchant gems that that are that are like anywhere from like six to nine percent resistance or seven to eleven resistance. Anyway. Yeah, I keep those. Yeah. They, they might be pretty nice. Yeah, because you definitely got to top off that resistance. That was something that I've been told time and time and again. Yeah, people, <laughs> you know, they went they went back and forth about the whole resistance. Oh, it's not good. You're still getting stunned. It's not whatever. It's like, oh, you're. Guys, uh, let's let, let's stop once for once when when you get uh, when you get into the raid. Sit down and try, try, I realize that I'm using the word try, to count how many times the boss hits you when he uses his uh, debuff, his debuffing attack. He hits you like 20 times. Of course some debuffs are going to go through, man. That's not how resistance works. It doesn't make you immune to everything. That's immunity. You're confusing resistance with immunity. Of course you're going to get debuffed. And of course you're going to get stunned sometimes. It's a 100% activation stun. It's going to stun you. Yep. But resistance helps mitigate that uh, to a degree that it allows you to, you know, cheat death a couple of times, get less debuffs, not get oblivion on your passive monsters like DS or Darien, you know, that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, resistance is a must, a must, must, must. It's the most must leader skill. If we're talking about leader skills, 
one of them should be resistance. HP and defense are both good. Don't listen to people who say, oh, HP is crap. It's not crap. It's great. HP is great because you have so much defense on your front line. Usually, if you've got them ruined properly, you have crazy defense on your front line. You don't need more that much. You're fine. You need more HP to you know, take a couple of more hits, help your back line. Because defense doesn't really help your back line as much as it does your front line. So if you have a good front line that doesn't need a defense leader, HP leader is actually better. If you have a, a struggling front line, then yeah, defense is probably better as well. Uh, also, don't diss the crit rate lead. Crit rate lead is great, especially if the people uh, people in the raid don't have like 100% crit monsters or high crit monsters. It helps with DPS a lot. Sure. Also, <laughs> defense break. I see people saying, uh, look at the lineup and see like, oh, we have a, a Wind Monkey King and we have a Tessarian and we have like, I don't know, a couple more other defense breaks that are on cooldown. Guys, they're not good enough. You need a Bella. If there, there should be one Bella or one Darian or one something that has defen- a very reliable first skill defense break in the raid. You wouldn't... Uh, like, defense break is perhaps the third most important uh, debuff in the, for the raid. It's more definitely more important than attack speed. It's... Uh, yeah, I think it's the third, like, attack break, it's about the same as glancing. For five, okay. glancing is a bit more important than defense break, obviously, but for four, where glancing doesn't matter that much, it's like, defense break is super important, because you have to kill the boss fast. I fail, I have failed because there's been no Bella or Darian in the raid mm-hmm. to put a consistent defense break up so that was, you can kill the boss. I was just about to say that. I had a, a couple of guildies that we were doing level four, and initially, we, we we used to clear it all the time, and and uh, I think we we substitute one person in, and and but made sure that that person still covered the same stuff that our other people do, and we just realized that you know we, we were dying way more than we generally do, and we we took a look at it again. We're like, oh yeah, the the defense break is not as consistent, therefore we're not doing as much damage, and his 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 damage you know over time increases. So we started dying exactly. randomly. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, um, you you're giving the boss more chances to kill you by letting it live longer with defense. Yeah. It's not just about the speed. It's yeah. not, it's not it's not just about the speed at which you kill it. It's the yeah. it's important to kill it fast because it's going to kill you if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the uh on that level 5 uh rifting it seems like I mean obviously, you know, the, with what you've already said before this going to help you out a lot, but it seems like that after that third jump um, from him, you know, the sooner you can get that attack break on him before he goes crazy with yep. his AoEs, um, seems to be one of the big struggles that I see a lot of people run into. So, you know, make sure you got that revenge set on Colleen, my man. You gotta yeah, have it. Reve- revenge Colleen, and that's why Speedy Colleen is also good because you know, yep. there's more chance. Uh, Speedy Colleen has more chances of uh, having a turn after the 25 or the 50 percent attack. Uh, yep. And then she could put an attack break on. Right, boss. And, and with the amount of base speed that that boss has at level five, it's definitely like two hundred yeah. speed. Colleen is definitely yeah, something that's, that's no joke. So make sure you do it. And I, it's not just the baseline. Like get her to two hundred speed. It's it's a lot of speed, sure, but so important, yeah. <laughs> so damn important. Right on. Well, Helps a lot. Let me see. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I know that we kind of talked about your epic fail, uh, you know, earlier with regards to that earlier on. But did you have any, if not any new epic fails? Did you have any shout outs that you wanted to do with regards to that? Mm, let me see. Epic fails. Uh, it's not that much of a fail because I have used them. But go, you can go to my monsters. You'll see a second basalt. Ah, uh, I, I do. I almost said something. I wasn't gonna do. It. <laughs> I wasn't gonna do it. I didn't have anything to six, so I'm like, uh, let's six star a second sure. basalt. Try to go. No, that's my real one. Go to the DPS one. That's the, go, the DOA go. one. Yeah, yeah. He's missing a rune though. But yeah, the the that one is like I made a rage defense could damage uh, defense basalt for fun. Yeah. I've actually used him in Guild Wars. He does 30k. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. He does 30k with both runes on max. So that's pretty crazy with Randy and Galleon. Yeah. Um uh, but he's though he's he's fun. I even max skilled max skilled the important skills on my uh on from the mammoth uh uh secret dungeon. Yeah. But yeah, it's not that much of a fail, but yeah. <laughs> 
I'm was, not exactly proud of it. Right. And that, it's the same kind of boat with me with regards to recent um, units. I, I just pulled a Charlotte a while back, and I know it's a controversy, and then people think, you know, make the comments that it's good or not. And, and for me, I've I've come to understand that you really can't test out a unit the way you want to test it out um, until you max skill it so you can see its true potential. And that's that's what I ended up doing. I ended up having uh, 22 plus Devil Mon, so I ended up, you know, um, skilling her out. Um, and she, with the runes that I had on her, she does really, really good. But I, I didn't have the composition that, that can allow me to take advantage of like a, a Wombo combo yet. I'm still missing a couple of key components. But so now I'm sitting... You know, with with sub like twelve to thirteen devil mind, and you know that you like for me, I always want to have like fifteen devil mind just sitting there. Um, yeah, I have uh, thirteen, I think, right now. Yeah, so that anytime I get a new unit that's like that can wreck face, then I can go ahead and you know play around with it. So, but don't don't you worry, guys. I'm gonna make Charlotte do what it do. We're gonna we're gonna test her out. After you the removal. you know what I do with her? She does amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, got me. it. Got to use I, it. She actually got a bit downgraded. She had like ten percent more crit. But uh, I put I changed her crit damage rune to and gave it to Julie and then swapped them around because I don't care that much about her damage. She still has like ninety one percent crit with her leader, so it's good enough. Right. Uh, but I wanted Julie to be decent because I use her, I use her in AO sometimes if uh, if there's a far heavy comp. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Charlotte is uh, I think Charlotte's great. Like she mine does with those runes you see she does like uh, what how much. Uh, 22k AOE with uh, attack bar reduction and uh, glancing. So that's that's decent. That's, that uh, I don't need more. I don't need more. I even she did 10k. That's enough for Teshar to clean up afterwards anyway. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. I can't think of anything else I wanted to add. Uh, I know we got a couple of um, uh, people that we're talking about. I think you were saying Nox, Nox here as far as, uh, you know, hopefully coming on board. Uh, he, he's who I recommend for your next. Uh, and he's... Uh, he recently, your viewers might know him. He recently made a a necropolis guide in Reddit. Cool. It was really cool and you know helpful and stuff. And he streams as well. He's he's a guildie, but I don't recommend him because he's a guildie. He's I think he has a lot of stuff to say and help you help you and your viewers out. Good. For the series, yeah, and, and if you guys ever catch, um, you know, great um, Reddit guides or whatnot, make sure that you, um, you know, send me a message. You can send me a private message on the uh, on the YouTube to go ahead and. Uh, hit me up with that so that I can make sure that the community knows about it, you know, outside of Reddit, um, to go ahead and make sure to check that out because there's so many good posts out there that people put out there that, that, that get get thrown, like they, they don't even realize they're out there um, until it's too late, until it's kind of past. So, uh, oh, yeah, there was, a, there was a, sorry to interrupt you, there was a raid guide from, uh, I think it was Syntac or something, I, I don't remember the name, but he, 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 he there was also a pretty good comprehensive uh, raid guide. Uh, Maybe Salad Raindrop was it? I don't remember who it was. I have to check. Uh, yeah, I, I, I miss. Like it's funny that I say that now. I missed a lot of stuff when I was uh, when I in the hospital with the baby and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. And make sure we get it on board. But uh, as always, I uh, got to do a, a quick shout out to you again uh, for coming aboard and providing the great uh, insight for the community. Uh, it's always appreciated, sir. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you for the opportunity to do so. All right, and we'll go ahead and close off the video right there. Make sure, again, guys, take a look at the top right. Go ahead and uh, follow him, subscribe to him. Make sure you go ahead and check him out over there at the camcord. Uh, it is always appreciated. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. It's a pleasure to make these videos for you, as always. It's your boy Childish and Karantha with Childish Plays checking out. Take care. We will see you next time, guys. We're out.